5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. If I were to ask you which of these individuals would you consider to be the healthiest, you might say, well, number 3, 4, and 5, these seem to have the best body weight range, so they must be the healthiest. I used to work in the health and fitness industry, and that's one common mistake many people have, or misconception that people have, and they say that the weight equals their health. So if someone has a healthy body weight, that must mean they're also healthy itself. And that's an important misconception to not have, because there's more to health than simply weight, and there's more to disease than simply being overweight or underweight. And this is why we're going to discuss this, and the dot point itself, the dot point itself says, discuss the difficulties and define the terms health and disease. So we have to discuss, which means show the reasons why. It's hard to say, okay, well, this one definition of health is true, or is one definition of disease is true. An example would be that, you know, some people might consider weight to be a good indicator of health, whereas other people might not. This is what we're going to discuss in this video. And I'll start with health itself. Now, this here is the definition of the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization is an international body that looks at health itself and disease and kind of it's why the definition of the World Health Organization has a quite a bit of weight because it's probably the biggest body in terms of health in the world. Now their definition says health is a state of complete, the word complete is important, physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So that last point means that not having a disease, so no, not having disease, whilst that's good, that doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. So that doesn't mean that you must be healthy. It's obviously good, but it doesn't mean that you must be healthy because it says you need to have a complete physical, social, and mental health. And it mentions that word complete as well. That was the definition of the World Health Organization. So what does that mean? Well, obviously, first of all, it means that not having disease is not enough to be considered healthy, you have to have its complete social, mental, and physical health. Now, what was meant by mental, social, and physical health? Well, mental health, that's how well you can cope in everyday life. So I'm going to write how well you can cope. Now, you know, there might be life is, itself is always you know, there's ups and downs. That's a normal part of everyone's life. And if you have good mental health, that means if there's a you know, down part of your life, you know, if something went wrong, that you have good coping skills, to be able to, you know, go get through this time without having too many problems. That's what mental health is more or less about. Now, social health, that's how, so the, I guess you can call the quantity, so how many, so how many and quantity and quality of your friendships. So you know, how good your friendship skills are and how many friends you have, and also importantly, how good you consider your friends to be. How, you know, are they trustworthy? Do you enjoy your time with them? That would be social health, the quantity and quality of your friends and, you know, your family life and your, your partner and all that goes into social health. Now, physical health, that's what we mentioned first. Body weight was one part, so body weight was important. It does, this does have a, play, a role to play when it comes to physical health, but there's more to it. It's also nutrition. And then there is your posture, and you should have good posture. And obviously, you should do exercise. All of these come under the area of physical health. In the introduction, we talked about body weight. So, if, for example, someone has you know a good BMI, which means that they have a healthy body weight, but they have you know, bad nutrition, they have a bad posture, they don't do any exercise, they might even smoke, etc., etc. And even though they have a good body weight, they would actually not be considered healthy. So health itself is more than simply the body weight. It's all of this, what I just mentioned, combined. That's according to the World Health Organization. But one reason why that definition is, as well is actually a bit tricky is because it says complete. Right, so it says complete physical, mental, and social health. It's very hard. So this is if you if this were a definition that everyone had to adhere to, it'd be very hard to consider it to be healthy, and there'd be very few people who would actually be considered healthy. Because just think about it. You know, you have to have a really good body weight. Need to have perfect nutrition, perfect posture, always do exercise, always have really many friends and good quality friends, and you, know, you need to be able to cope whatever the world brings at you in terms of you know everyday life cycle and you know events that might come up. If you have, and you can do all that at all times, then you would be considered healthy. So it's a big ask. I think it's a big ask to always have 
all of these parts of your health at the maximum level. So even though that's definition, it's still, you know, very subjective because that word subjective is also important. It means it's personal opinion based. And it's a bit hard to accept that you know, we have to have this complete physical health, mental health and social health at all times. So it's more personal. So I mean, for example, it's, uh, you know, if someone says you have good mental health, that might mean one thing to me and one thing to you and one thing to another person. It's all personal opinion driven. There's not one hard definition for each of these. You know, what, what, what is a good amount of exercise? Well, there's some guidelines to it, but other people might have different opinions. And it's very opinionated, it's very opinionated the actual health itself sector. And this is what this part was all about. You know, you should know the definition of the World Health Organization. That it's not just merely having no disease, but it's that complete physical, social, and mental health. You should know what mental, social, and physical health are. But you should also know why there's a problem with that definition. Which is, now, what exactly does it really mean with mental, social, and physical health? It's very subjective. And if they ask you to have, always to have that complete, then that is a bit, bit of a big ask. So people don't usually take that definition word by word. So they change around a bit because it's a bit unrealistic to expect that. Now, that was health. What disease is? There is disease, again, it's, it's not one that's really hard to define. And the definition that's often used is this here. Impaired function of the body. Now, if you look at, okay, let's look at a couple examples. Let's look at cancer, cancer, and heart disease. Of cancer, we have our body literally producing cells which are harmful. And over time, cancer will harm or kill us. So it's fair enough to consider cancer to be a disease. But even then, for example, a cancer patient might still consider himself to be healthy because he's overall, you know, he's doing a good amount of exercise. He's got, even though he's got a disease, he's still considered to be mental and social healthy. So even though he has a disease, he might still be considered himself to be healthy. So that's, again, why another part of that definition, health and disease definition, which makes it difficult because it's not just a straightforward kind of definition. But someone with heart disease, heart disease means that you obviously have clogged up heart rates, And that could also lead to death eventually or at least impairment of your normal daily life. So these two are more or less just straightforward types of disease. But as I mentioned, we can still have disease and still be considered healthy overall. But that's you know, two examples of disease that might be fair enough to accept. But then this one would be another good example why it's difficult to just have one definition. So, so a person in a wheelchair. So if this boy, for example, were in a wheelchair, and he always looks very happy, so he might be actually very happy. He might have a very fulfilled life and you know, he has lots of friends and mental health is brilliant and his physical health, even though he can't, he can't run, he could still do other things. So he might himself might consider himself to be healthy. So if you ask him, are you healthy? He would say, yeah, I'm sure I'm healthy. But if you look at the definition itself, it says impaired function of the body and his legs aren't working. So his legs are impaired. So according to the definition that we have here, it would say that he's actually diseased. He himself might say, actually, I'm healthy. So there's another difficulty, you know, you have, might have people who have different opinions. He himself might consider himself to be healthy, whereas according to the definition, he would be diseased. Same thing with this person. Here we have someone who might be a bit elderly. And, you know, when you become a bit older, there's just parts of your body who stop working as well as they used to. So he might be you work using a walking frame to be able to move. Now, what would we consider the aging process? So is the aging process is that considered to be a disease? According to definition, it is a disease. So according to the definition, it is a disease because his, his function is impaired because he's obviously using a walking stick. But if you, know, if you were to ask me, I would say, no, aging is not a disease. It's just a normal part of a life cycle, which is why it's, again, it's difficult to find in health and disease because according to that definition, it would be a disease according to most other people's definition, it would be considered not to be a disease, it would just be considered to be natural. So this is why both health and disease are difficult to define. So what I would recommend is I would recommend you to know those definitions. You don't have to learn it by heart, but just you know get the grasp of those definitions of health and disease. What you should also do is just know why they're both not perfect. So you know, where are the loopholes for those definitions? So for example, is that the health you know, that it was quite demanding? It's quite complex. What do we have to do to be healthy? Plus, it was also subjective, which means it was very personal driven. So what you know, what might be healthy for you 
or what you might consider to be healthy might be something different to me. And disease, again, same thing. The definition is, whilst it sounds good, and disease is impaired function of the body, and something like cancer would be a disease and heart disease would be a disease. But then we have to consider something like, you know, a person being in a wheelchair, who even considers himself to be happy and healthy, he would also be diseased. Or an elderly person who uses some walking frame would also be considered diseased because both their bodies are impaired, even though these processes might not be really considered diseased by other people. So again, I might say, you know what, aging is a normal process that happens to everyone and it's not a disease, whereas according to the definition it would be. And if you ask that boy in that wheelchair, he might say, I'm healthy, I don't want to be considered to be diseased, I have a handicap, but so what? Whereas according to the definition, he would also be diseased. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.